Hello, everyone. How's it going? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm J. Joe, and it's wonderful to have you here on my channel. Today marks the third day of my channel's launch, and to celebrate, I'm sharing six spine-chilling tales from my childhood imagination throughout this week. Welcome to My Terrifying Tales from My Childhood Imagination. If you're new here, let me share a bit about myself. Since the age of 10, I've been captivated by the art of crafting mysterious and thrilling stories. This fascination was sparked by the eerie tales my elders shared and was further ignited by the plethora of horror stories I eagerly consumed. Over the years, I've honed my skills in creating unique, bone-chilling narratives. You might notice that I tend to be a bit mysterious and perhaps a bit shy. That's part of my creative persona. I hope you enjoy this distinctive aspect of my channel. Remember, behind this mysterious facade, there's always a warm, friendly smile for you. Just yesterday, we explored the story of the mad bald man. I hope it was as captivating for you as it was thrilling for me to tell. Anyway, I'm excited for another storytelling. So, are you ready for an enthralling journey into the unknown? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up with my latest hair-raising stories. Let's dive together into the dark depths of the unimaginable. I'm J. Joe, and I am your The Storyteller. It was the frosty Christmas Eve of 1990, when a new family hastily departed from their recently acquired home, just a stone's throw away from ours. As our families gathered to celebrate the holiday season, an unspoken sense of unease hung in the air. There was something undeniably amiss with this departing family, something that whispered dark secrets. Our curiosity peaked, my family and our neighbors decided to pay a visit to their old stone house, guided by a collective concern for their well-being. Upon arrival, we were greeted by a heart-wrenching sight. The youngest member of the family, Anna, sobbed uncontrollably her trembling finger pointing fearfully at the house's foreboding windows. We exchanged puzzled glances, unable to fathom what could have instilled such terror in the child. In search of refuge, the family had sought shelter at a nearby hotel that fateful night, likely with plans to embark on a quest for a new abode in the days to come. Anna's tear-stained face, as well as the haunted expressions worn by her siblings, Henry and John, coupled with the palpable concern etched into their parents' features, painted a chilling picture of the horrors that had unfolded within the confines of that old stone house. After the family's abrupt departure, our peaceful neighborhood found itself thrust into a series of bizarre and unsettling events. The enigmatic house changed hands repeatedly, casting a long shadow of foreboding over its history. Ultimately, it found itself in the possession of a group of fervent born-again Christians, Little did we know that this pious change in ownership would herald a new chapter of terror in our lives. As I now recount these childhood memories, the vivid recollections of that chilling narrative transport me back to the very place where it all unfolded. A shiver runs down my spine, a visceral reminder of the unspeakable horrors that continue to haunt my thoughts. These tales of terror remain etched in my memory to this very day. Allow me to share with you a bone-chilling story from my youth, one that stubbornly refuses to fade away, a story I've come to know as The Haunted Christian Church. Let's dive into the darkness together. In the year 1987, our grandmother spun tales of an enchanting but now foreboding edifice nestled in our neighborhood, christened the Stone House, built in in 1975. The name itself derived from the meticulously crafted stonework that enveloped the structure a macabre tapestry of a once splendid dwelling, it stood as a haunting sentinel in the heart of our modest community, a testament to an era long past. At its inception, the stone house was the brainchild of a brilliant architect, his vision brought to life by his equally talented and charming wife. Their collaborative efforts seamlessly merged his architectural prowess with her innate sense of interior design, fashioning a dream home that exuded both beauty and structural elegance. But as fate would have it, this idyllic abode was destined for a darker fate. On a chilling Christmas Eve, tragedy befell the family dwelling within those stone walls. A merciless fire, 
the harrowing embodiment of destruction, devoured the sanctuary that had once been filled with love, leaving behind only ashes and heartache. The inferno claimed the lives of the architect's cherished family members, casting a shadow of sorrow that would linger for years to come. In the bleak month following this catastrophic event, consumed by grief and despair, the architect chose to end his own life within the desolate confines of the stone house. The reasons behind the devastating fire and the architect's tragic fate after his suicide remain shrouded in mystery and sadness. Curiously absent were any close relatives to tend to their belongings or commemorate their lives with a proper memorial. In the minds of many locals, it was the ornate Christmas tree that became a sinister symbol of their doom. The wife, renowned for her impeccable taste in interior design, had chosen genuine candles to adorn the Yuletide centerpiece, their flickering flames serving as both illumination and unwitting temptation. Whispers circulated that curious hands, perhaps unsupervised, had meddled with these fiery decorations, inadvertently sparking an unstoppable conflagration. To this day, the chilling truth behind the ghastly events that unfolded within the menacing walls of the stone house on that fateful night remains concealed veiled in shadow, and buried beneath layers of speculation. Speculations now linger like ghostly apparitions, concealing the grim events from prying eyes. And so, the macabre legend of the stone house endures, its ominous history warding off potential buyers until an ill-fated attempt at renovation in 1989 breathed new, unsettling life into its cursed halls. In the present day, the malevolent presence of the stone house cast a shadow over the 1990s, changing hands multiple times due to its strategic location near bustling commercial hubs and its picturesque surroundings, complete with a sprawling lawn. Following a daring renovation in 1989, a chilling pattern emerged. Each unfortunate owner's tenure within the house was remarkably short-lived, measured in mere days, or sometimes even just hours desperation drove them to part with the accursed property at drastically reduced prices, forever marked by the darkness that had touched their lives. Despite the ominous rumors swirling about its history, new occupants continued to be beguiled by the stone house's facade of perfection. Each arrival was marked by an unshakable sense of dread that settled like a heavy fog. The very walls seemed to reverberate with the echoes of bone-chilling apparitions, and sinister shadows slithered through hallways once innocent. An inscrutable, unrelenting gaze bore into their souls, intruding even upon their most private moments, as if an unseen presence lingered just beyond their vision. Overwhelmed by sheer terror, these unfortunate souls fled under the cover of night, vowing never to return to the abyss of unspeakable horrors that awaited them within. By 1994, the once proud stone house perched on the outskirts of our serene town, had been rendered unsellable. It had become a whispered legend, a place where no potential buyer dared venture. With dwindling options, the owner reluctantly decided to put the property up for rent, drawing gasps of astonishment from the town's residents. The first tenants, monks of serene and stoic countenance, entered those ominous walls, their presence a beacon of hope. We speculated about their purpose, whether they battled demonic forces or offered solace to tormented souls, shrouded in their holy garb. But their expressions betrayed nothing. All signs of diabolic activity seemed to vanish in their divine presence. A cloak of eerie silence descended upon the stone house as townspeople passed by at night, the monks departing no more perturbed than when they had arrived. Our little village fell under the deceptive spell of tranquility, lulled into a false sense of security, but that calm was shattered on one fateful night as the veil of darkness was drawn back once more. In a chilling twist of fate, the ancient residence found itself swallowed by flames, a dark echo of the infamous fire that had consumed it back in 1975. Haunted by its charred history, we could no longer deny the festering malevolence that dwelled within its walls. As we stood on our doorsteps, helpless witnesses to the all-consuming blaze, Bewildered and fearful whispers began to circulate among us. Miraculously unscathed by the inferno, the monks who had taken residence there recounted a bone-chilling tale, 
they spoke of a frigid winter breeze that swept into their sanctuary, setting their altar ablaze as they fervently prayed for salvation. Despite their attempts to dismiss any notion of supernatural intervention, their eyes betrayed the undeniable truth. Something malevolent had unfolded within those cursed walls. In response to this spine-chilling warning, a solemn oath was sworn among us, vowing never to rebuild or sell that accursed land. Time marched on, memories faded, but an oppressive sense of dread lingered, haunting our town like a malevolent specter. Some horrors, we learned, were best left unspoken and buried in the darkest recesses of our collective memory. Yet the owner, driven by desperation for a return on his investment, could not resist the urge to renovate the residence. It underwent a transformation into a simpler, single-story home with wide-open spaces. The next occupants were a congregation of warm-hearted, born-again Christians. Their joyous hymns on Sundays seemed to cloak the property's harrowing past, and the once-dreaded haunted house now exuded an aura of peace. The churchgoers confidently asserted that no sinister forces disturbed their prayers, suggesting that the monks had vanquished the demons lurking within those walls. However, in 1997, terror reawakened in our town. During an otherwise tranquil evening service, blood-curdling screams erupted from within the stone house, drowning out the melodic praises and prayers. My friends and I rushed to the scene, only to find townspeople frantically blocking the entrance, clutching rosaries and kneeling in prayer. Amidst the cacophony of screams and saintly songs, it felt as if an apocalyptic battle between good and evil was unfolding before our very eyes. Then came the fire, its ravenous flames threatening to consume all in its path. Yet through unity and divine intervention, our town managed to rescue those trapped inside. This harrowing ordeal left an indelible scar on our once peaceful community. Years passed, and the lot lay abandoned until its owner finally decided to transform it into a vibrant garden, teeming with colorful blossoms. A poignant reminder of life's beauty amidst the darkness. Every corner was illuminated with light, dispelling the fearsome shadows that had long haunted passers-by. In 2002, United in purpose to cleanse this tainted piece of land, both a Christian pastor and a Catholic priest stepped forward to bless the grounds. From that day forward, the whispers of the haunted Christian church or the infamous stone house ceased to exist, silenced by the symphony of serenity and a vivid testament to a bleak past left forever behind. Thank you for joining, and I hope you like my terrifying story. What are your thoughts with this story? Let me know your thoughts down below, and until next time, watch out for the next story, The Harvest, The Cursed Black Caravan Killings. Stay tuned for more spine-chilling stories in this captivating series steeped in mystery, only on The Storyteller.